Hey, Jonah. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? Good, I'm surprised no one's on the call. <laughs> I was just looking to see if I missed something. Yeah, we signed up um, to come and talk about um, open cost, which is um, our open source project that we just submitted to the CNCF. So um, oh, cool. yeah, so hopefully some folks show up. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that in the agenda. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I think you're seeing my uh, my messy other workstation. There he is. How's it going, Matt? I'm well. How are you? Uh, stuck in bed with a broken leg, so not that great. But I'll oh my get God. through it. Did you have a diving accident? I did. Yeah, I fell on a boat and my leg got all bent and broke my leg and did a bunch of other damage oh my god yeah it sucks fantastic because diving is underwater and it's probably unlikely to break bones i'm so sorry to hear that <laughs> yeah it sucks but i'm doing what i can how are you um i've been busy 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 uh last week Good. was career vacation for kids so i kind of got roughly zero things done last week yeah <laughs> Never home from school. Yep. But we did hike a mountain. We hiked Mount Monadnock in uh, New Hampshire, which I had never done before. Nice. It's a good accomplishment. Yeah, it was like, I don't know, 2,600 feet of elevation change and one over 1.9 miles up and 1.9 down. So it only took us advanced climbers like five and a half hours to do it <laughs> instead of three. Nice. But it was fun. Hi, everybody. Okay. And then for folks to join, and while while more folks are joining, I'll say uh, welcome all uh, uh, to the first uh, TAG observability meeting of uh, the month. Um, this is a CNCF sponsored event, so the code of conduct does apply. Please don't put anything in the chat or say anything that would violate that uh, code of conduct. Please do sign in to the agenda doc. Link in the chat here. It's Ben Smith, as usual, here. So we've got a, a couple of things lined up for today. Unfortunately, uh, Hubble sends the regrets, um, uh, but they will be joining us on the 15th, uh, fairly in-depth review. Um, in addition, uh, uh, Pixie Lab, who, uh, who, had, who presented uh, just under a year ago, uh, is gonna give an update on what they've been up to uh, for the last year. So that's coming up on March 15th. Um, uh, we don't really have trivia. Um, other than to say, uh, in, uh, uh, in May, uh, 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 um, can everyone please mute? It's hard yeah. to hear, Matt. Thank you. Eric, Eric, please mute. Yeah, sorry about that. Hold on okay. a sec. Okay, um, right. So uh, on the 15th, uh, Pixie uh, will be uh, giving an update uh, of what they've been up to for the last roughly almost a year since they last uh, presented. And uh, Hubble, who was going to present today, uh, uh, sends the regrets uh, and is postponing until the 15th. But we're expecting a fairly deep dive, um, you know, on the order of half an hour of, uh, about Hubble, uh, which is... Uh, a fairly mature project. Uh, today we've got some stuff lined up. So I guess uh, uh, we've got coop cost or open cost uh, and an update from Gibbs uh, on uh, on the personas working group and some stuff going on with the business advice subcommittee. Uh, so with that, uh, please take it away. Uh, 
Um, is it uh, Jack? Jackie? Jackie. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Yeah, so I was here last time and I briefly brought up Open Cost, which is Cube's, Cube Cost Open Source uh, Project. Uh, I'm Jacqueline Salinas. I'm Director of Marketing and Community uh, for Cube Cost. And today it, here is Webb Brown. He is uh, Cube's Cost CEO. And we wanted to give you an overview of Open Cost um, because we are actually going to be, well, we submitted the application already. Um, for Sandbox. So we are hoping that next week um, open cost gets reviewed. And so Matt um, encouraged us to come and, and talk about open cost um, to the tag observability. Um, so yeah, here we are. And I'm going to hand over the floor to, to Webb. Hey, everyone. Thank you for, for having us. Really excited to share about this new open cost effort. Um, I've got a handful of slides that are dead simple. Uh, stop me at any point, but can also do questions at the at the end. Um, and like Jackie mentioned, I'm one of the co-creators of KubeCost, uh, and now one of the like you know co-creators of of the Open Cost project. Um, so first, just a really quick background, like you know why are we doing this, um, and what we see is. Um, you know, as Kubernetes adoption is growing, um, a lot of teams are you know struggling to accurately measure, allocate, you know, monitor cost, um, and uh, that becomes a you know business critical problem uh, at a certain point in dollar spend. Um, so that is what you know drove us to launch the Kube Cost Open Source Project, and now what is you know becoming the Open Cost Project. Um, so, you know, we talked about the why a little bit, but, but what in the world is open cost? Um, so open cost is, you know, really two things. Uh, one exists today and one is just being created. The first is the core data models and cost allocation engine from the Coop Cost Project. Um, so this is already open source today. Um, it is, it's used by thousands a team of teams uh, actually managing a couple billion dollars of spend um, currently, and it provides real-time cost visibility um, across any dimension in a Kubernetes cluster or set of Kubernetes cluster. So you can look at cost by pod, service, you know, label, annotation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, like very tight support with uh, the major three cloud providers. Uh, so Azure, GCP, uh, and AWS, uh, and there, uh, open open costs or this allocation engine would do things like support, you know, any enterprise discount or spot or RIs or savings plan, all the like complexity of you know the many different billing SKUs that are out there, and then it would also support you know on prem kind of bring your own custom pricing sheet to where you can say. Um, you know, set an hourly rate of your nodes or disk, you know, CPU, et cetera, et cetera. Um, by default, uh, it like is coupled really tightly with Prometheus. Uh, teams run it with, you know, Thanos, Cortex, you know, M3, uh, like a, a range of solutions. Basically, um, all it needs is a like PromQL, you know, endpoint uh, for like, you know, uh, building its its models and just exposes all of its metrics on a slash metrics endpoint, um, so it can be used for you know alert manager, you know Grafana, you know custom um, kind of like you know metrics that are derived from cost and cost efficiency metrics. So that's part one. Again, that's used by like you know thousands of teams today. It is currently branded as the um, Coop cost uh, cost model. Uh, but would become part of the core, you know, open cost project. Um, and secondly, is you know what we've seen from you know working with you know hundreds, if not a thousand plus teams at this point is that there's still a ton of ambiguity in terms of like actually measuring cost. Um, like um, you know, how, how do you handle shared resources? How do you allocate, say, Slack or idle cost? appropriately? How do you measure the cost of a container? Do you look at, you know, usage, requests, limits, some combination? Um, you know, a lot of the teams that we work with today 
had uh, you know different approaches to solving these problems with typically like homegrown solutions, oftentimes a Grafana dashboard before we started working with them. Um, so we've just started this open uh, spec. Um, we're working on it with a handful of partners. It is at you know 0 .0 0.0.3, which we're like actively iterating on now, but we view this as a, a really valuable piece of the open cost effort, which is again, just trying to help um, you know, facilitate uh, standards uh, when it comes to actively measuring costs because there's ton, both tons of complexity and lots of, of ambiguity. Um, so a, a little bit of background on us. Um, Ajay, who is the co-creator of you know, Coop Costs and now Open Costs, um, both of us were at Google for about half a decade before starting this. Um, we were working on these kind of same sets of problems uh, originally on internal tooling. Jay also worked on you know, Google Cloud stuff, and I worked on Dev Tools. Um, so, you know, thinking about this combination of cost, uh, performance, and and reliability. Um, you know, throughout that time, a number of our teammates were on the like Kubernetes effort, um, and that ultimately inspired us to launch you know Kube Costs and now Open Costs. So, you know, where are we where are we going? So Jackie mentioned in the process of submitting this for uh, CNCF Sandbox project, uh, which we're you know super excited about. Uh, we uh, want to invest a lot in the community and you know do everything we can to to be great contributors um, and are excited about you know partnering with others. Um, and we view it as like have a lot of you know intersection and again that like the the majority of our uh, users are running Prometheus and Cortex and and Thanos today, um, but also feel like you know we could still learn a ton from this community uh, when thinking about these broader observability problems. So I'll stop there. Again, super quick rundown on open cost uh, and you know tangentially you know coop cost. Happy to share more on on any part of this. I got a couple of questions for you, Webb. Awesome. Um, so are you just contributing the model or are you contributing all the software required to run this on your own? Yeah, so it is all this software to run this model. Um, so what it looks like is um, it would go and say, and, and happy to like come back with more architecture, but like it would detect that you are on say an EKS cluster, it would go and fetch Ikea or AWS billing for you, it would then build this model and expose these metrics on a uh, slash metrics endpoint. Um, the uh, the open source doesn't ship with a Prometheus, but if you point it at a you know, Prometheus uh, service address, it would then uh, build all these data models and expose all of the APIs needed to say what is the cost of a namespace, a service, a cluster, a pod, a container, et cetera. Um, so yeah, it is it is a working you know uh, piece of software that you know exposes data on these APIs and also has a, a simple UI. I would say um, at a high level, like analogous to maybe the Prometheus you know console. Yeah. Do you do you have third party contributors to this, or is it just your company that's been building it? We do um, across okay, this cool. and the community Helm chart. I would estimate um, between fifty and hundred contributors. Nice. Um, cool. And, and yeah, so like, you know, thousands of teams uh, using it uh, in, in like their production environment. Um, one, one thing to point out is that um, Kube cost uh, today, while we have a community version, which is just like a bundled version of open source, we also then have like enterprise products on top of it, uh, where yeah. we like, you know, sell and license those independent of, of everything here. Cool, sounds great, thanks. Um, sorry, my bad. This is Boris. My bad, Miss um, You just mentioned you have open source and enterprise version. I'm looking on kubecost.com. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. So, so if you go to like you know pricing on kubecost.com, there would be you know like business tier and enterprise tier, and basically it's taking you know all of this. Everything is built on top of the like you know library. What is the major difference on enterprise versus open source? Is it security or? It's a lot of the um, like well, really common. That I cannot get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Re really common features would be um, like you know RBAC. So let's say you've got you know twelve different clusters uh, and you have teams or departments allocated by some like you know namespace. You want certain teams to be able to see only their cost data 
you know, that would be you know one that's common and you know integrating with say like you know SSO and, and SAML to do that. Um, another would be working with teams to do like long-term metric retention, get that set up. Um, so if you have like a you know, either use a Thanos that we help you deploy it, or you have an existing you know Cortex or Thanos deployment, uh, we would work with you to like have you know 365 day lookbacks in your large scale enterprise environment to like really help you tune that. And then all of the like you know support and services that come with that. So like when you roll this cost data out to your finance team, we're there to support you if you have any questions. That's interesting, um, <clears throat> one step by step. So number one, you would provide this by tenant. It's almost the same concept as a Grafana enterprise uh, metrics. Okay. Second, what you just mentioned, you would keep this on backend of Cortex. In this case, I assume on backend such as S3. So you just set up some retention time. This is yep. what your software does. And, and lastly, um, you mentioned so you would provide this information, for example, to some departments um, based on what uh, reporting solution, or you just do some different extractions, different way to extract. Yeah, great question. So um, a, a combination of either like exporting CSV, you know, from our front end, or maybe even just taking you know screenshots of reports on the front end. Um, also like, you know, a lot of teams will just hit the APIs that are the same as the open source APIs and extract that to like some metering or billing system that they have internally. Um, sometimes other, you know, tooling, uh, like, you know, in their, you know, like DevOps workflow, something like Lens, Mirantis, or, you know, D2IQ systems, et cetera. And if... I hope I did not hijack this one. It's quite an interesting topic. Uh, just one more question. Uh, when you uh, collect this data, how you actually interact with Cortex? You just simply push, such as a Prometheus, just, you just push this data to Cortex and that's it? You just so, run your port and push it? Yeah, so we, so our, like the open source project can run in kind of two different ways. One would be kind of agent mode, just which is what you said. So it's like, you know, go and fetch all of this billing data and then tell you the cost of a, node, disk, load balancer, et cetera, et cetera. And that would just be expose those metrics on a slash metrics endpoint. You know, you can consume those in, you know, any Prometheus, Cortex, you know, PromQL, you know, like system, and then, um, you know, do with those as you will. But then we would, for like a, our, our full product end to end, we would expose those metrics. And then we would also build our mo like models by querying that same PromQL endpoint. Uh, the, the main reason we do that today is we get like C advisor, like usage metrics, you know, directly from say like Prometheus um, and it's, you know, like uh, C advisor uh, scraping. Mm. So, and where we can find this open source because I just uh, hit good cost and I see naturally your enterprise version, open source, simple, powerful, this is a... Uh, uh, can you by any chance to send link? Yeah, absolutely. There should be a GitHub link on that page, but let me just drop here. Here <laughs> is, um, and so we would, you know, as part of the like, you know, submission process, we would move this to an open cost repo. You know, we would rebrand this. We would like change the readme, but this is kind of what is largely the the like core you know project today. So this would be you know change, but like the the code of everything I just talked about lives here you know, again for the like open source group call, uh, What will be open cost? Thank you very much. I have an additional question. Um, uh, so does the cost model today, or or do you plan to to cover such? Uh, things as like, you know, bulk buying compute early uh, or various discount plans, which can quite substantially change uh, the raw costs that would be reported for say like, you know, instance, whatever costs this much. Um, yeah, great question. So it does support it. It's actually supported more easily with our like o our open source Helm chart, um, which if you go to like, you know, github.com slash coop costs, you know, lives there. Um, so, so we absolutely support that on like community version of coop costs. I do think we have, um, a decision to make as a community, uh, around what exactly we support in the open cost effort, whether it's like, just like you said, Matt, all of the, you know, crazy enterprise discounts that can, you know, vary widely across the cloud providers, um, 
so, you know, I think torn. So, and, and part of why I think um, it's an open question in our eyes is that that requires like a cloud integration with your billing data, right? Versus open cost today, you literally just like, you know, Helm install or, you know, deploy a pod and it just detects that you're on like in a, a GKE cluster and then pulls GCP pricing. So I think it's, um, we're a little torn in terms of like how much integration complexity we expose in the open source. Um, but we, yeah, we, we do support it and definitely something we're open to like having as part of the like, you know, open costs integration install docs, et cetera. Oh, can I ask one more question? Uh, uh, is this mature enough on the terms of, let's say, hypothetically, if this is a IKEA on Amazon and we use standard for any big company, a, a, a role success. So is your solution capable to work with a role access, ARN or? I, I may want to learn a little bit more, and this would also probably be more kind of the expertise of, of our team and, you know, like co-founder here. Um, but, but yeah, absolutely should, you know, should not have any, you know, major issues, not aware of any like, you know, real limitations. And obviously like, you know, everything is deployed with, you know, read-only access, um, you know. To... And you are not using any additional uh, extractors sorry, exporters such as yet another AWS. So it's a pure your software. You are not using another open source exporters to get this data out from Amazon. You're using your own exporter that you Correct. developed. Correct, okay. yeah. So we'd be talking directly to the Kubernetes API, talking directly to like Amazon, Google, you know, billing APIs, et cetera, mm -hmm. and exporting those on our own, yeah. Well, thank you. Of course. I have another question. Uh, so le less about how does how does it work or what features are there, but you know, what are some of your goals for joining the CNCF sandbox? Um, like, do you have any kind of defined? This is why we're doing it, or what we hope to achieve, gain. Definitely, and we've got um, we've got a roadmap uh, doc on there, which you know that's that's part of it. Um, but I think one of the big ones that I see in the short term is actually around kind of part two of this, which is the spec. Um, we're really excited about, you know, just getting community voices involved and, in, in, you know, creating a standard here. I mean, again, we just see like, we've probably seen a hundred different ways that teams have like implemented this. And ultimately it's like the cost of a container is not um, like uh, how to measure the cost of a container is not agreed upon across the community. Um, I see that as like a super valuable first milestone. And then I think we can build a ton on top of that. Um, but beyond that, you know, see an opportunity for us to, you know, support more cloud providers. Um, that'd be another like, you know, second goal that I'd love to see happen as this gets, you know, um, a, a neutral governance model and just more support from the like, you know, ecosystem in general. Sorry, I have a noisy keyboard. Um, by additional cloud providers, uh, uh, which do you support today? Do you, do you mean in addition to sort of the big three or do you mean you're working on EKS and you hope to expand to things like AKS or GKE? No, yeah, so we support like, you know, AKS, EKS, you know, uh, GKE, and then like, you know, any, you know, roll your own, you know, cops, you name it, like uh, clusters on those environments, more like, you know, the the IBM clouds and the Oracle clouds and, you know, digital ocean. Um, I'd love to see us, you know, the, the project support, you know, in the near term. Um, you know, so that's uh, uh, one thing I, I will say, this is maybe a little outside the box, um, but one thing that our team is really interested and passionate about is um, kind of like the the energy impact of this project, right? So like, you know, the carbon emissions uh, like footprint is you know, closely tied to the actual financial cost. Um, I think there's, you know, a real opportunity and, and I'm personally really motivated to see us, you know, do something there. Cause you know, when we talk about cost today we predominantly talk about the financial costs but there are, you know, other um, kind of, you know. How oh, exactly you would calculate this part? I'm just curious <laughs> in terms so, of uh, Celsius or what exactly you would do? Yeah, so um, Google in some of their, and I, I'm actually 
can't claim to be a, like an expert here in, in monitoring you know, CO2 emissions, um, but Google exposes ratings by, I believe it's still by um, like DC and not, and, but potentially by AZ today. Um, where you know they especially like essentially expose a, a carbon rating, um, so we believe that could be like a, a valuable input to say um, again the cost of like resources consumed in those uh, environments and like use that as a um, you know like an index or multiplier to to like scale that across different environments, um, but ultimately be coming up with like you know for every say. CPU hour, GPU hour, here's like the carbon, you know, like footprint of running that given the environment you're in, the machine you're on, you know, maybe even down to the rack one day. Um, so that is, again, a little outside of the box, but something that our team is, is really interested in um, now that we have this like foundational cost model. Cool. And um uh, again, one of my last questions, I guess, uh, how can people engage? Like, do you have open meetings? Uh, what's your governance model? Is there documentation for new contributors that might want to might want to either provide some of their real life experience or engineering time or what have you? Yeah, great, great yeah. question. And Jack, Jackie can share more here, but going to be doing a lot more with this like contribution, you know, of co open costs, et cetera. But like, you know, on the documentation side, we're actively working on the spec now. Um, so that is like, I just want to make one call out that if anybody's interested uh, in contributing there, you know, making a bunch of progress as we speak. But yeah, a lot more to come on, on governance. Jackie, not sure if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the things that I'm working on right now is I think, you know, my next step is um, launching um, uh, elections to select a governing board for the project. And then um, also I have the intention of launching an ambassador program to also help recruit and onboard new contributors. So all that like foundational community stuff is um, I'm working on it right now. And I think, you know, we're modeling everything after um, the CNCF uh, governance model. We've, you know, right now, like we've recently just put a code of conduct in place. So um, I do have a page that I just need to quickly look it up that I can drop in our notes of how to start contributing um, to open cost. But absolutely, that's like the other reason why we also want to get pretty integrated into the CNCF and Kubernetes community is because we see a lot of that person persona overlap in these communities. Um, and then like Webb mentioned, you know, one of the things that we also want to be able to help um, as, a, as, as a member of these communities is, can we start standardizing some of these, um, you know, practices? Can we, can we, you know, produce a best practice document on, on Kubernetes spend um, and then work with the community to, to give that to, to Kubernetes. Um, so a lot of stuff in the works right now, um, but yeah, we're super excited and we're, we're really hoping that um, we get reviewed next week at the, at the TOC meeting. Cool. Um, uh, I guess I would ask for four links that I don't have yet. Uh, one's a link to the roadmap, one's a link to the spec, uh, the contributor doc you just mentioned. Um, and then um, um, there was a fourth one that I now forget. Um, I put some to dos in the uh, in the notes. You could just put them there, and then and then everybody's got them. Awesome. We will we will get you those three. And if you think of others, let us know, and we'll add them to the doc. Sure. I, I realize this is sort of hand waving, uh, but um, now I remember the fourth. Uh, when you said you're kind of working on the spec now, uh, what's the rough time frame you expect? Like. Q1, Q2, Q3, 2023. <laughs> like, what, what's your like kind of hand wavy timelines for what you would hope to have your initial pass at it? And then, you know, you, I guess what I'm really asking is when can when can folks actually look at it and potentially provide feedback in a in a realistic, pragmatic way? Yeah, I, I, you know, hand wavy for sure. Uh, but like, I feel like we're on a track to be at like a 1.0 kind of this summer. So, call it like you know late, late Q2, early Q3, um, you know, have probably like, you know, five or so, five or six or so partners in there, like actively contributing it to it now. Um, so like, well, very much welcome feedback, uh, but yeah, relatively early days, but I feel like we're making fast progress. Awesome. Uh, does anyone else have more questions? We're at, uh, we're at half past now. Um, 
if not, we could we could move on. Uh, or is there anything else you wanted to cover before we before we do so? I don't want to. This isn't a hook. <laughs> no, I would just say thanks for all the great questions here. And again, we feel like we've benefited in a really big way from all the like awesome work done in this group. Um, and yeah, look forward to you know collaborating and and doing any, anything we can on our end to make you know positive contributions. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, and and if you'd like, uh, as things move along, uh, and you know, assuming you're you're into the sandbox, you know, feel free to come back for a more technical, uh, technically focused deep dive, uh, either to this meeting or we could we could make it happen uh, async and post the video for it. So yeah, that sounds once awesome. You, once you're into the CNCF, yeah, uh, I'd love that. All right. Uh, so next up, uh, we've got Gibbs, uh, Gibbs Cullen from Chronosphere. Yeah, um, thanks, Matt. I'm going to share my screen. I put a few slides together. Oh, Leslie, um, now I remember the fourth thing. Could you please link the slides that you showed so that we, yes. so that folks, because there's a lot more people that, you know, are, are in the tag or, or watch the videos than, than totally. are here. Totally, yeah. We'll get those added now. Okay. My slides are very, <laughs> I put them together pretty quickly, so they're not the most visually um, exciting, but um, but yeah, I just wanted to give a quick update on personas, um, which is one of the working groups that was started, I guess, middle of last year around along with some other working groups. Um, and yeah, so um, just kind of to give people more context on the on the purpose for this working group, this is like the goal in my own words. So it was, it's not like officially deemed the, the goal or the mission of this working group, but um, essentially we just want to kind of, it's, a, it's essentially going to be another resource for people in the, in the tag community, um, to use when kind of trying to better understand who are the key personas that are interacting with, with certain projects. And then like, based on some personas, how can, um, how can some of the, the project leaders kind of better um, engage these personas or kind of grow their projects um, by targeting new personas that kind of aren't currently being um, kind of reached out to um, for a particular project. So, so yeah, that's kind of kind of the high level goal of, of, this, of this effort. Um, I've been kind of taking the lead in terms of getting things started. So um, back in August, um, so like pre, pre KubeCon North America, I kind of um, did a bunch of interviews and reached out to a bunch of tag members um, to just kind of uh, get a sense of what their persona, what their role is in, in their current company and like kind of what their interaction is with open source and some of these CNCF projects. Um, and yeah, so I've, I've, I've done nine interviews so far and kind of um, across kind of a a range of different companies, some what some that are more like enterprise, like Oracle, and then some that are like more um, kind of more new, like cloud native, like the like Noble Nine and and stuff like that. So kind of getting a range on um, to try to get a some, you know, make sure I'm getting various perspectives. Um, so so yeah, I have I have notes and everything. Haven't consulted too much yet, but um, I do plan to like kind of pick this these efforts back up. Um, once things quiet down a bit, um, it's kind of been a crazy start to the year, but, um, uh, but yeah, if you're interested in helping out or kind of helping do any of these interviews, um, or contributing in any way, just, yeah, feel free to ping me. There's also like the, an issue started in the GitHub, but, um, I have like a list of, I think I put in the, in the issue, like the list of questions I've been asking and everything. So, um, you can kind of have a starting point there, but, um, so that's kind of the update from, from my end. But I was recently introduced to some members um, leading a kind of overlapping project on the um, business value subcommittee um, within the CNCF. And there, there's a few of them that are kind of driving this effort that's basically around building out personas, but like more generally and across like all of the, all of the CNCF projects. Um, and so they're actively working on this. And so um, so kind of had a call with them to see kind of where I could help, um, help kind of contribute with the interviews and the research that I've done. Um, they're pretty early on still, so I'm kind of wanting to wait 
till things get built out a bit more since these will then be rolled out across um, all the CNCF projects and kind of hopefully help provide some standardization across the projects. And then once once those are kind of more finalized and rolled out um, initially, then then I would love to like go in and kind of see how we can tailor some of them to be more like observability focused. But these are just some of the high level goals they have. Um, and I guess anti goals they have. So I won't go through all of them, but you can kind of get a sense for what they're going for here. Um, and just for visibility, these are the target personas that they've come up with so far that are supposed to kind of cover all the all the use cases and all the kind of potential personas that um, would engage with any of the CNCF projects across the entire landscape. So a lot of these titles, like, um, well, I mean, there some of them I, I you know I don't you don't see as often in observability, but I think um, I think we can kind of use them as like a starting point and then kind of go from there. Um, and, and then, um, the two that are currently being worked on are the platform engineer persona and then the cloud security engineer or architect persona. Uh, and that, that's kind of determined by the subcommittee. Um, and, but, you know, these are the other ones they want to get to at some point. Um, and just to give you an example of what the end, the end product of this would look like at least for right now, I'm sure it'll change. Um, this is just kind of the initial stage, but this is. Um, this is an example of one of the cards they've started putting together for the platform engineer, which, you know, you might also see called the platform operator or DevOps engineer, um, but kind of, you can see kind of what the, what the, the type of content that these cards will have. Um, and then, and then from there, the, you know, various personas will get assigned to different projects so that the project owners in those communities can know like how better to, how best to like tailor their work around these personas and how best to like engage with them to hopefully grow the communities, build like increase engagement, um, all of those things. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of the update here. That's, I don't really have too much more actually, it's pretty kind of short and sweet, but, um, since, since these efforts are already being kind of ongoing, I was, I do want to kind of, I want to keep doing the interviews and getting collecting information and research on my end from the observability side, but kind of wanting to wait till things are a little bit more flushed out and like established with this subcommittee project so that I can like kind of leverage the work they've been doing um, since the goal is to hopefully standardize these across the landscape. So, um, so yeah, I don't know if anyone has any questions or anything. Are you planning to then uh, analyze the various interviews to extract, for example, uh, on the personas, the type of uh, platform engineers that uh, they are obviously the, um, it's, it's if at the moment it's very logic. <laughs> I'm looking for more health metrics on the platform, uh, uh, looking at the logs on or events on Kubernetes to help me to diagnose how my platform is behaving. So that will be the, the signals or the type of interests for that type of personas compared to a pure application owner who is pretty much interesting on how fast is the methods, functions, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the throughputs coming on my services and so on. Um, so I think there is, from, I mean, from, from, what, from what I know, there's different interests and different priorities depending on the role of those each personas. Are you planning to go then on that road, say highlighting the areas that more makes more sense for that particular type of personas, or is it mainly to... Uh, to report uh, global statistics on on who is yeah interested. so I mean so I think they're kind of going after like um, their anti goal is like one of them is to provide extremely detailed or specific uh, specialized personas because um, they are trying to make these a little bit more general to be used across the landscape I think for the purposes of our tag we can then take some of these personas that they'll have kind of built out and then like specialize them more for our own purposes, just for the, the observability based projects. Um, and then that, and then when that, and when that's um, ready to go, then yes, I will, I will then pull from like interviews I've been doing and like make them more tailored and specific to um, what I've been seeing and hearing from from like members of the of of the committee and the, and even beyond um just like people that are using some of these projects so okay. but still pretty early on yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I can provide a little context from last year as well. Um, you know, we found ourselves in some of the meetings last year uh, and even recently, you know, you know, talking about, you know, so-and-so would like this or this would be useful for, for this person or that person. And we didn't really have a common vocabulary. Uh, so, you know, Gibbs um, kind of uh, jumped in uh, last year and started to try to provide some, some structure and shape around this. And then late last year, the Business Value Subcommittee uh, launched a, a similar effort, as, as Gibbs mentioned, and I've provided a link to our February 1st meeting from a month ago, where uh, Catherine Paganini uh, came and gave an overview, a brief overview of the, the Business Value Subcommittee, as well as some of those other, other efforts. Um, uh, and if folks aren't familiar, they're, they're, they're building a matrix of all, you know, taking the CNCF landscape, <laughs> Um, which is uh, you know that that massive eye chart and trying to kind of go through sector by sector um, or subsection by subsection to provide you know a more comparison and one useful thing that uh, might highlight it which I'll, I'll dredge up uh, in a few minutes and add to the notes is a comparison of all of the open source ingresses that are currently there so comparing you know nginx to this to that to that um, you know you know for that yeah. little subsection. Yeah, but I think it'll be helpful once like the projects will have like little maybe even little icons at some point when these are a little bit more established of kind of which personas relate cl most closely to those projects. Um, you know, I think that'll help people that are new to the CNCF or looking to, you know, start using a CNCF project, they'll be able to see kind of where how it aligns with their with with what they're wanting and their needs and their goals based on the personas that are tied to them so. Um, it'll kind of help with that because I think there's, there is, there are so many projects now, so it's kind of hard for, you know, someone that's maybe not as familiar with like with some of the land with the landscape to like know where to start and which how one project's different than the other. Um, so this can this will hopefully help with some of that longer term. But yeah, if you if you would like to speak with me to like kind of get so I can get some more insight on like. Um, kind of what, how your role fits into your greater org and with the CNCF, like I would love to set up some time. And then if, you know, if you are interested in helping out as well, like definitely let me know. I would encourage people also to reach out to your professional networks. Like if you have someone in mind who's been looking for a way to engage that might not be, you know, writing code, uh, but, but more, you know, providing domain expertise or insight into, what motivates them, what their goals are, what's important to them, et cetera. Um, please do make some connections. Uh, you know, our, our, our professional networks are, are one of our huge assets uh, that we have, right? So let's leverage it if possible. I would encourage us to, to, to do so. Cool. That's all I had. Thank you very much uh, 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 to the folks who, who presented. Uh, we've got a few more minutes now uh, for open floor. Um, anything is in, in game. I have a I have a minor administrative note, and then I'll and then I'll and then I'll uh, mute myself. <laughs> um, we're starting to use GitHub issues more. Or I'd like to, uh, as we now kind of have more and more people coming out of the woodwork and, and wanting to actually. Uh, do things outside of the context of this meeting and you know drive efforts uh, and i noticed that since our our repo is in uh, the cncf organization uh, it's kind of a pain to assign issues to someone when they say i want to go work on something if they're not part of that umbrella org uh, and so i've made a contributors team and i'm trying to work out with amy and and the folks that run the cncf or you know what the right way to do it is because right now it's a it's a fixed membership and i don't I'd like to not, you know, duplicate all, all of that kind of stuff. So um, stay tuned. I should have some some details next uh, meeting. But I'd like us to get a little more organized and and be able to welcome folks like you know project managers or or, or folks that are better at that sort of thing than I, um, uh, and, and give them a way to do so that's not arduous. So. Um, I just want to take the, the five two minutes maybe to uh, to uh, uh, to make a call for for the community. Uh, we I'm trying to with the help of uh, several people here to create uh, like a news on the open source community. 
on the latest news on what's going on uh, because from a, if you're not part in actually contributing it's very hard to keep track on which which version is stable which not which things are I'm able to use as a customer so um, to make the uh, the the technology more accessible to everyone i think uh, having a journal showing what's the latest update what's the value of this product what you can do with it uh, so the idea is to produce 10 minutes videos uh, really on a regular pace and then if you need more details i have another youtube channel where i can uh, provide more details on, on the technology itself but the idea of this format of video is more about sharing the news on the latest news of the open source world um, so that's why uh, yeah, the, the biggest challenge that I have as, as of now is to get the news because <laughs> I'm not able to, to search everywhere. So if you have a, a source of a data source that are, uh, is, uh, is suitable and uh, that, we, that it could be uh, reliable for, for this project, uh, please share it. So then uh, I, could, uh, I could use it and, and build the content from there. Yeah, uh, thanks, Gibbs. Um, I'm working with uh, Michael on this one, so that is obviously <laughs> a great source for that we're going to okay. use. Okay, uh, I was going to say it sounded similar. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, uh, yeah, the right. idea is to is to to have. If you have another I, uh, website or another things uh, uh, where I can find that information, or where we can find that information, that will be very useful for us, so we can be uh, effective and not uh, spend hours and hours of searching for things. Yeah, and just to clarify, you're only looking for observability type of news. I'm looking mainly for observability, but uh, um, but again, we can be very uh, more on the cloud native space, mm -hmm. not necessarily on observability, but if there's any uh, solution that could help you to administrate your cluster in a smarter way or uh, or to manage your uh, auto scaling or whatever. So I think it, may, it deserves to be promoted because again, th uh, the success of the project depends on how many people people is actually using it. Yeah. If nobody's aware, then nobody's going to be uh, is going to use it. So I think that the idea is to, uh, yeah, promote. How are you intaking current it. content right now? Sorry? How are you currently intaking content right now? Now, at the moment we are launching the project. So it's it's in a really, I'd uh, say, early stage of the project. Mm -hmm. but we, we want to start probably next week to, uh, to do it. Um, and then how are you? Is it like a newsletter or is it's it going to be, be like? video format oh video format so it'll be on a weekly basis bi-weekly we were fishing for bi-weekly first then we'll see if we can move it to weekly yeah yeah i, I can provide a little con back backstory so so uh about half a year ago we're about to we're about we've been we're about to engage with the community sites that the cncf supports and so we have a youtube channel and sort of license from the toc to be creative uh, and and yeah. use it however we like. So so Henrik uh, actually has a really cool YouTube channel today. I'm going to put it in the notes called "Is It Observable?" Um, uh, backed by some GitHub repos, so you can follow along. And I've been going through some of some of uh, Henrik's work from the last uh, year, and it's fascinating and awesome. Uh, and so um, uh, I think the the thought would be this might be something that in the context of the tag we could have sort of a regular cadenced. Uh, pulse of sort of a yeah. curated set of what's happening, you know, not very long videos, but as Henrik said, something accessible uh, and digestible, you know, that that's relevant. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, you know, at, and again, at this point, uh, you have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's early days. Uh, it's yeah, been... no, um, I, I'm, if you are looking for people to help out, I'm totally happy. Um, to help out, I used to run the CDF's podcast, the pipeline, all things CD and DevOps. So I grew that program um, and I do love to produce content. So actually that's how Henry and I knew each other <laughs> is from our podcast days. So i um, happy to contribute there. Um, I'm happy, like, but that's why I was asking all these questions because it is important for us to just figure out like, how do we intake uh, people's ideas and um, how do we just spread the news within our own networks and say, hey, like if you've got observability news, this is how, like where you should be submitting it. So um, yeah, let me know, happy to contribute there. Sure, cool, that would be very interesting. Thanks. Um, it's, uh, we actually have an issue that uh, is issue 49. Um, uh, at the moment, it's just, you know, a, a, a wrapper 
uh, you know, a placeholder. Uh, so add, you could add yourself there and or talk with Henrik about I don't engage and it's cool that you guys have done this before. Um, uh, Alalia and I spoke about it uh, last uh, fall in LA, but you know, a big part of the tags um, uh, presentation there to at KubeCon uh, was specifically around, you know, we need people uh, who have experience with video production and content curation and, you know, all of the things that are not necessarily engineering. We need engineering too, uh, but there's opportunities, you know, across a wide variety of disciplines to contribute. Uh, and I think that's that's one place where I think we can um, set an example for for the community and some of the other tags as well uh, to to bring in these other disciplines that are, are very very much needed. Yeah, totally. Do you, but uh, quick question for the tag observability: Do we have a document on um, for like non technical contributions? Because that also sometimes it's like most people when they think of open source, they always think of, oh, that's like a technical type of contribution. And it's so not true. Like you mentioned, we need event coordinators, we need content producers, we need editor, like copy editors, all this type of stuff. So um, I think the Kubernetes community has already a document that's like how to do uh, non-technical contributions, that might be something that maybe we look into also producing for ourselves, because like you said, there's other stuff that we we need. Uh, I, I completely agree. Um, I, I can link you uh, the talk about it uh, last fall, but uh, um, feel free to make an issue in our repository and drive it. I mean, um, okay. you know, it's, a, it's an open, you know, the, the, the tags in general, you know, I say this a lot, and I'm probably like a broken record to folks that have, that have been here before, but you know, there's really two main missions, right? One is to advise and, and inform the TOC on, uh, you know, gaps and opportunities in the ecosystem. Uh, but, you know, the, the other perhaps even larger portion that makes the first one possible is to bring together vendors and users, um, cloud providers and, and folks from, from, from all stripes and walks so we can kind of come together in this forum. And, and that is by definition, multidisciplinary uh, and, and quite broad. Um, so, you know, the only process is, is the process that we make for ourselves because it's useful, right? So feel free to just jump in. And if there's existing collateral, but, uh, link it, add it. Um, yeah, um, feel, feel, feel empowered to, to just jump in and get hands dirty. But there's not a lot of red tape on purpose. Uh, we're technically three minutes over. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Um, was there anything else before you drop? Or... All right. Well, uh, have a great week. I'm in Boston. Uh, I hope it's warmer for you. Uh, tonight is going to be nine degrees Fahrenheit. So most of you are going to be warmer than me. Uh, Stay warm. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, everyone. See you later, Matt. Bye, Thanks everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you.